The Fed's QE into infinity will precipitate the collapse of the dollar and subsequent depression. The Fed will debase the dollar and cause hyperinflation, and the ensuing calamity will be apocalyptic. It will be worse this time because we are headed to an inflationary depression rather than a deflationary one. At least until the last deflationary one, the average person may not have had much money, but what money he did have actually bought more stuff. In the coming inflationary one, the dollars you do have will buy less, so the average man's standard of living will go down even more. Welcome to the survival economist. Critical events are happening so fast, all around the world, as markets cool, political unrest heats up. It's all part of the greatest depression, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it, and the markets are losing it, too. The global slowdown will accelerate, and equity markets will decline. Mergers and acquisitions have fallen 11% so far this year, as companies brace for periods of growing economic uncertainty. To keep the cheap money flowing, this year, more than 30 central banks around the globe have lowered their interest rates, and dozens are expected to cut their rates again next quarter. The Australian central bank dropped interest rates, already at their lowest in history, to a new low of 0.75%. India also cut its rates again, bringing them down to 5.15 from 5.40% in hopes of propping up their slowing economy. With auto and motorcycle sales dramatically down, consumer spending markedly slowing, and fears of a cash crunch, India's central bank tweeted out assurances that there will be plenty of dough for depositors. They claimed the reports of bank instability were rumors. China, the world's second largest economy, posted its slowest economic growth since 1990. To date, government measures have failed to reverse the trend. Refusing to aggressively lower rates, Chinese attempts to boost the economy with fiscal policy, such as infrastructure spending, have failed. Infrastructure investment was up only 4% from January to August compared with 20% only two years ago. Moreover, Chinese private bond defaults are up 60% in the first eight months of the year. Countries accumulated more debt than they can ever repay. Corporations accumulated more debt than they can ever repay. Consumer accumulated more debt than they can ever repay. This time around, you will not be able to bail out the corporations without bailing out all consumers. What happens to the money when you must print to keep humans from rising up and destroying the elites? What happens to the elites when the consumer figures out they were played for fools and the entire surveillance state was built in anticipation of the big collapse that's coming? The non-1% is very close to collectively waking up. It will make the Arab Spring look calm and peaceful. The monetary inflation, a derivative of QE and money printing, has been going on since the advent of fiat paper money, to sustain perpetual poverty, and force serfs to work to survive, thereby effectively giving the money printers the power to hold the advantage of bargaining, trade, and commerce. Which, of course, results in low wages, price controls, monetary value control, legal oppression through bribing state and federal employees to write laws, and because they can print money infinitely, they can purchase, own, and control everything under the sun, globally. Basically, it's the quintrillionaires versus the millionaires, because the serfs don't have money. Global neo-serfdom in short. The difficulty now is that the measuring yardstick all these years was gold, and now its price is totally distorted out of reality, and even if gold is taken as a yardstick, its demand is not what it used to be, there is a whole generation that does not understand its utility, and therefore it does not want to buy or hold it. Add to this the infinite quantity of money generated out of every hole in the bankster's body, all those derivatives, and all. Since the manufacturing capacity of the countries have become incompatible and not comparable in any standard way, supply-side calculations are also distorted. The normal way out of a depression is either the 0.1% buys all the assets in the country, and take the people into serfdom, or the 99% demolishes the castle walls, introduces a new currency and resets the money market. We are opting for the first. I do believe the serfdom has been perpetual, the bankers sustain it, and the castle can no longer protect the local serfs because of growing immigration and street terrorism. The pretty and rather large corporate buildings will continue to become vacant, unused, and randomly ransacked by the serfs and foreign serfs till everyone begins to see the result of neo-feudalism as only ever more poverty for all. Obviously, the banks can't feasibly continue to bail out the zombie core, which adds little or no value. 
The bankster pricks didn't learn their lesson because the CDOs are being used now more than they were in 08 and when that bitch pops, it's over. There won't be any bailouts for the banks this time around either, so they'll all go bankrupt. There won't be any need in the running on the banks either. When the currency is debased to the point of worthlessness, what's the point in doing a bank run? Those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. People just can't seem to get that. One thing I've noticed, in keeping up with not only how this is playing out in the US, but also in other developed countries, is that there seems to almost be a spell cast upon central bankers, money managers, and politicians, which is leading each and every one of them down the same path. It's almost like an orchestrated evil is at work, pulling the strings of these puppets, accomplishing its will. This does not end well is one thing I'm sure of. Prepare accordingly, if preparations of that magnitude are even possible. I wish everyone the best of luck because this is going to be a bitch. This time it is going to be apocalyptic financially. Somehow we have thousands of more subprime loans, defaulting home, auto, and student loans now than were issued in 2008. It's crazy. Meanwhile, in Europe, in addition to playing the monetary stimulus card, the European Central Bank's president Mario Draghi called for unity, urging member states of the Eurozone to commit to fiscal spending. Numerous European nations, including Germany, which is slowing into recession, however, are opposing the ECB's stimulus mandate. They want to keep their budgets balanced and are not willing to drag their nation into debt. On the bankster side, to boost fees lost because of low interest rates, down about 20% this year, banks increased their lending to corporations eager to borrow cheap money. Thus, the $250 trillion global debt bubbles continue to swell be it monetary or fiscal stimulus. It's becoming increasingly clear that neither measure, although they might temporarily boost sagging economies, will not reverse the oncoming greatest depression. We forecast that US equities, however, have topped out, and, as the impeachment process against President Trump accelerates, it will push them much lower. Further, as economies continue to decline, social unrest will dramatically escalate, as evidenced in nations from South America to Africa, from Asia to the Middle East, and from Europe, soon to the United States. And we have more market manipulation. Fiat is about to die for a very long time after this. This is going to be so big that I can't even wrap my head around the consequences yet. We are moving towards an economic Armageddon that will shake the world to its core. Silver, gold, and lead will be very useful in the coming years. Prepare accordingly. This was the Survival Economist. Please like share, subscribe, and please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.